What up, beautiful people? Welcome to the Shining Life family, a place where we learn God's word that's going to build your faith strong and transform your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. And we're going to review one of the articles from the devotional. We're going to do a Bible study, learn God's word together. Today's title, we're talking about His word in your spirit. And uh, the theme, our theme scripture is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. In verse 16, I'll read it and then we can discuss this and we can, you know, dissect the scriptures. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Um, yeah, so this is amazing. It's talking about God's word dwelling in your heart. Before even we dive deep into the into the rhapsody. I like that term. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It's like it needs to settle. It's like a, you know, when you when you have like a, it's, it's like a seasoning. Let the word of God dwell in you, not, not lightly, but richly. Like you're so full of the word of God. And then you have this aroma of God's word just oozing out of you because you're so filled with God's word. And this is what we're talking about. Now, let me read on the first paragraph. Pastor Chris says, In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul by the Spirit prays, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The word understanding is translated from the Greek works, Greek, Greek, from the Greek sunesis, is an interpretation, a way of thinking, a mentality. The Apostle Paul in that verse was dealing with a certain kind of understanding, a revelatory understanding which the Word gives. So yeah, this was, you know, when you when you study the Scriptures and you look at these prayers, when, when you say, for example, when Paul said, for this cause we don't we don't cease to pray for you, especially uh, in the epistles where Paul will pray for the Christians in, in various um, cities, and we have the content of the prayer. That usually is the prayer of the Spirit. That's the desire of God. So we have the the Spirit of God is giving us this content, telling us this is His will for us. So when He says, I desire to pray for you that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Like we have a deep knowledge of God's will and we have an understanding. And this is not a, Pastor Chris just said, this is beyond, it's just, a, it's not like a, a logical thing. It's a mentality that comes through revelation. And and the spirit and the word can give you that mentality. It is a revelation and it's a mentality that's it's a mindset that comes through the word. So that's why he said, let the let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. He will give you a mindset. He will give you revelation, spiritual understanding. That's what the word of God does. It gives you wisdom. The word of God is wisdom. Uh Pastor said, that's why you need to stay in God's word, studying with understanding read our opening verse again he says let the word of christ dwell in you richly this will make you spiritually sagacious insightful and wise oh my goodness the word of god makes you wise perceptive quick and sharp um you'll be able to, to deal wisely in the affairs of life because the word of God is is, is in you richly. It, it, that reminds me of that um, scripture in Joshua um, about meditating on God's word. And how can God's word, this is amazing. Because how will God's word dwell in you richly? This is beyond just um, a light. Let me see if I can find a, a, a better translation for this. Um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let's see if we can find a different translation. Because we need to understand that the, the depth of um the word of God being in us. So Colossians chapter mm, let's look at Amplify. Usually Amplify has a better translation, but let's try and see what it gives us. Hopefully. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It says, Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds, dwelling you in in all its richness as you teach and the morning strain and water is in, in all insight, intelligence, wisdom, and spiritual thinking, as you sing and psalms, making melody to God 
Ooh, this reminds making melody to God with his grace in your heart. Hmm. This is even another topic. <laughs> ah, I don't want to digress, but that just reminds me of another scripture. But anyway, let's look at a different translation. Let's look at a message. I just want to find a word. What does that word mean richly? I mean, it means deeply, but I want to get a, a deeper perspective. So what is that? So Colossians chapter 3. Verse 6, it says, let the word of Christ, the message, have have the run of the house. <laughs> wow, this is even different. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. Sing and sing your hearts unto the Lord. Let every detail in your life, words, action, whatever be. Okay, this is, okay, one more translation. <laughs> I really want to know what that word means. So one more translation and then we'll, we'll, we'll get it. It says, let the message of Christ in its all richness fill your lives. Fill your lives. Teach and, and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Man, so richly. And he makes you wise. When the word of God, because the word of God now controls your thinking. And he affects your mindset. And I, I believe for the word of God to dwell literally, you, you need to, to have the word settle in you. And and that's where I think, that's where I was, uh, the Spirit of God was trying to get me to go. The book of Joshua, if you go to Joshua, um, Joshua chapter 1, it's a famous scripture, chapter 1 verse 8. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh, 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 uh. Actually, we can even start from verse 10. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the... You know, man, I don't... Let me change the translation. Let me just use that. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you'll be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to, to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command, be strong and courageous. But I want to read the Amplified Version. I think the Amplified Version gives it better. It says, uh, It says, This book of the Lord shall not depart of their mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely. And have good success. You shall deal wisely. The word of God makes you deal wisely. And for it to be rich in you, it, it, we need to meditate on the word so that it can settle down in our spirits. So that was the point I was trying to get. Anyway, it says, um, another beautiful part of this is God isn't just raising us up for his, for this world. All he's doing in us and his programming in us through the word is for the ages to come. So if you don't have the word in you, with the Holy Spirit granting you spiritual understanding, insight into the realities of the kingdom, while you're still in the earth, how are you going to function in the world to come? Oh man, this is even deep insight. Who thought? You know, sometimes we look at things from this world only. This is a deep insight by the Spirit telling us. This life is beyond, is, is beyond, the word of God does not end in this world. We just think we need God's word from this world and then we study the world. When we go to heaven or when this world comes to an end, we won't need God's word anymore. But the Spirit of God is telling us here, the, no, the word, because he said heaven and earth, there's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. But he says, my word will not pass away. He says everything will pass away. That means in the world, in the ages to come, in the world to come, the word of God is still going to be relevant. And we'll still need to study God's word. Can, can you believe it? Because this is mind-blowing. Because you just thought everything would just end in this world. And then the world comes to an end and we'll be with Jesus forever. We won't need to know the word. It won't be unnecessary. But we're learning. For there's going to be a new world and it's going to be a new earth. And there's going to be new ages. So it doesn't end. There's going to be new ages to come. Oh man, this is this is exciting. I know we need to study more of this. This is amazing. So we will need God's word in those ages to come. Wow, wow, wow. So Pascal said, said, therefore it is important that you study the scriptures with excitement. Have a wild and voracious appetite for the word. Be all out for the word, because God's word is everything. 
with the word in you, it doesn't matter what you desire in this world. You can get it. With the word of God in your, in your spirit and coming f- forth from your mouth, you can serve the Lord faithfully and bring him glory now and in the ages to come. Oh, glory be to God. So the word of God will control you. That's why he said, let it dwell in you richly. You won't need to think. He said, no wonder he said in Joshua, he said, then you make your way prosperous because this thing is, is just directing you. The word of God is just propelling. You're not even thinking about it. You're not even thinking to try to make yourself a success. The word just makes you a success. It reminds me of um, Acts chapter 20. Let's look at it. Acts chapter 20. Let's look at King James Version. We, we looked at different translations. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Oh, man. Yeah, so we need to have a curriculum. I think that's the best word for it. A curriculum of God's word. A regime where we, we, we put, we fit, like we're doing right now, we're studying God's word every day. That's what I'm saying. If you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We learn God's word daily. He says, and, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all things that are sanctified. You see, you're not even struggling to, to, to make your way success. He says, he will give you an inheritance. That's why the word of God, he says, he builds you up. You're not even struggling like, oh man, I'm making this thing work. No, he says, if you let the word of God dwell in you richly, you meditate on it, it, it dominates your whole system and whole being. It will just, it's like a GPS system. You've just been moved and navigated. You make your way prosperous. You just find yourself in the right place at the right time. You just find yourself being moved forward. You don't understand this thing. You're not planning it. It's just like, whew. He said, you, you're waxing great. He said, the man walks great and the man moved forward. That reminds me of Isaac. That's in uh, Genesis. Because the word of God is in our spirit strong. You put the word in you. You feed, feed on the word daily, daily. You have a daily regime. This is not a one-off thing. That's why um, this is just an, as- uh, an avenue where we learn God's word together. Every single day, I released a video. We started wrestling together. So you put in your word in you. You're not taking breaks. There's no breaks from the word. You're feeding your spirit. Like you don't stop eating, right? Because it will not be good for you. So it's the same way with the word of God. You just put the word in you and then it pilots you. It moves you. You're in the right place at the right time. It brings the right things. It brings the right things at your place. And the word is medicine for your flesh. That's another thing. The word of God is really, it says man shall not live by bread, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is medicine for all your flesh. That is in Proverbs. It says it's, it's medicine. It's in my saying, attend to my words. Give, ooh, ooh, let's find there. Yeah? Since we're here, let's find these scriptures. Um, okay, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Let's start from verse 18. It says, but the path of the just is as the shining light. <laughs> a lot of people wonder, where did we get the name for the shining light family? Well, it came from the scripture, the spirit of God. <laughs> the spirit of God directed directed me and showed me from the scripture. It says, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more onto that perfect day. It shines brighter and brighter on that perfect day. You know, there's, there's, there's no dimness, there's no darkness in your path. It is a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter every single day. And he says from verse 19, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. I'm going to verse 20. That's where I was trying to go. He says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. He says, Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of their heart. Is it not like what he told us in Colossians? Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you. Literally, says, let him not depart from thy eyes. He says, listen, incline thine ears to my saying. Let it not depart from thy eyes. Study it, read it. So you're not only listening to the word, you're also, you're also studying and meditating on the word. He says, keep them in the midst of thy heart. For verse 10, he says, for they are life unto those that find them, in health to all thy flesh. It says, keep that heart with all diligence for out of your issues. Like it says, the, the word of God is health for your flesh. You feed your own word. That's medication. The word of God is, is curative. It is medication. Imagine going to doctors and say, you should take this every day. But you take the word. 
tablets of the word daily tablets of the word you you overdose on god's word you feed your word such that you know like oh dear lord this this just reminds me of something you know like sometimes there's some foods that you do eat like for example if you had a if you have onions or garlic for example garlic yeah garlic is the one you know have you ever had like a like a spicy food and then you have all these spices chilies and garlic and then you maybe you're eating this kind of food it's really hot and spicy until you start sweating it you notice as you sweat you 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 sweat you you'll, you'll be sweating the food because you, you'll be having lots of garlic and someone will be like oh did you eat garlic because you smell like garlic because you the food starts coming off your pores off your sweat because it is strong you know the word of god has a smell too <laughs> oh dear lord the same way you can eat food and it, it can come out your body and people can see it the word of god has a smell the more you meditate on god so you eat it so much and you just start smelling of the word let me show you this um yeah let me show you this yeah so i'm reading the book of second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 amplified value it says but thanks be to god who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. It says through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. So you, 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 you have the word in you. They smell that beautiful smell of God's word. Everywhere you go, you make it evident because you're so full of God's word. And that's important. All right, let's take um the confession together. Say, repeat this after me. I walk in righteousness and dominion. I have insight into mysteries and secrets of God's kingdom. I live above the world and its failing systems. I live in Christ and his world order. Hallelujah forevermore. You can read further studies in Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 18. And you can follow a one-year Bible plan or two-year Bible plan. So pick whichever scriptures that suits you. So I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. You know about learning God's word and, and letting it dwell richly enough. Having a, a curriculum of God's word in your spirit every day. You put the word in you, and then you can just see it changes. So, I hope that's been a blessing. So, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to the family. Welcome to Shining Life Family. Make sure you subscribe. We learn God's word here every day, so that's important. Do that. And I want to pray for if you're not born again, if 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 you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you to receive <clears throat> to receive salvation. So, I want to say, I want you to say this prayer after me. Oh Lord God, I believe in all my heart in Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you Lord for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you said that prayer. Congratulations, you're born again. It's as simple as that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. That's important, number one, so you can learn God's word. And I want to pray for everyone that's watching that a God, the hand of God will be upon you strong, that you may grow in spiritual wisdom and understanding, and God's word will dwell in you richly. I pray for you that whatever plans that you have, they will succeed. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, no matter what challenge or problems you're going through, the Spirit of God will give you the wisdom. The Spirit of God gives you the victory. And the Spirit of God gives you the dominion. You are, you are, you are ahead only. There's no defeat for you. Because the greater one lives in you. And you're victorious. No matter what challenge it is. A, what if it's a health challenge, a financial challenge, a challenge with your loved one. Christ is your victory. The Spirit of God is with you, helping you. Do not be afraid. You are victorious always. You cannot be defeated. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen, amen. Congratulations. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.